As your family grows, Voyager is the wagon to grow with. Plymouth Voyager, the magic wagon. You gotta drive it to believe it. In late 1983, the first minivan rolled out of the factory at Chrysler. The Plymouth Voyager and Dodge Caravan transformed mobility for the suburban American family. Here's how the minivan came to be. Remarkably, it shares some history with the iconic Ford Mustang. This is the history of the minivan. In 1974, Ford President Lee Iacocca and a team of engineers headed by Hal Spurlick saw the need for a front-wheel drive car-based family van. A decade earlier, both Iacocca and Spurlick helped lead the creation of the Mustang. Spurlick's team concocted a special prototype van. Since Ford didn't have a front-wheel drive platform, they instead used a chassis and engine from a Honda. Hey, before we continue, we'd like to thank all of our subscribers, including you who is watching right now. Do us a favor, because it really helps us out. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We have at least one video out every Saturday. And hit that bell for notifications of our next video. It really does help us out. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. With the runway success of the Mustang, Iacocca had become an auto industry titan by the early 1970s. Yet he was still afraid that company boss Henry Ford II would kill off his pet project. In fact, Ford pushed back on the idea, but Iacocca was steadfast in his belief that the market was ripe for a new style of a family vehicle. And this was backed by market research. And a wagon so versatile, so right for America today, we can't build enough of them. On November 2, 1983, the first minivan, a Plymouth Voyager, rolled off the production line in Windsor, Ontario. That's right, the first minivan was actually Canadian. Initially, the minivan was sold under the Plymouth Voyager and Dodge Caravan monikers. This is your new van. It sure is. You like it? Boy, that's something. What is this? Chrysler Town & Country. The upscale Chrysler Town & Country variant followed in 1990. People love the van's roomy interior, abundant cargo hauling ability, easy access sliding door, all wrapped up in a peppy car-like package. The Volkswagen station wagon is only nine inches longer than the Volkswagen sedan. Before the car-like Chrysler minivan, vans were either boxy affairs like the VW bus or truck-based affairs such as the Ford Econoline. The Chrysler vans were an immediate smash success. 209,000 were sold in the first year. In all the universe, there's never been anything like the new size Chevy Astro. Chevy, Chevy, Astro, Astro. Soon, rival car makers launched their own minivans, such as the Chevrolet Astro and the Ford Aerostar. Toyota spruced up their plainly named van to better compete. Volkswagen did the same with its venerable Vatican. And in the car business, product comes first. And product is what brought us back to prosperity. Not bad for a company that had one foot in the grave. The success of the minivans, along with the company's K-Car sedans, saved Chrysler from the brink of financial disaster. By the early 1990s, the company was turning out iconic cars, such as the Dodge Viper RT-10. Back when Chrysler invented the minivan, who would have thought Plymouth Voyager would become as popular as it is? By the minivan's 10th birthday, the market had matured. Chrysler held as much as 40% of it, but its competitors had also stepped up their game. We call it Previa. It's a Toyota. It's simply amazing. And it's like nothing you've ever experienced. In the early 90s, Toyota introduced the innovative but quirky Previa. Ford dumped the truck base Aerostar for the car base Windstar. GM introduced a trio of car-based minivans sold by its Chevrolet, Oldsmobile, and Pontiac divisions. Introducing Odyssey with four doors and an easy fold-away seat. It's not just a minivan, it's a Honda. 
In 1995, Honda unveiled its underpowered and undersized Odyssey van. Smaller players such as Nissan, Mazda, and Mercury all entered the market. Well then, it would appear that for the first time ever, the Motor Trend Car of the Year is more than a car. It's a caravan from the new Dodge. In 1996, Chrysler responded with a third generation Dodge Caravan, Chrysler Town and Country, and Plymouth Voyager. In its first year out, the Caravan captured Motor Trend's coveted Car of the Year award. The new Chrysler vans featured updated interiors and engines, marking significant upgrades in comfort, utility, and performance. By the late 1990s, Honda and Toyota learned their lessons. They dumped their unorthodox designs and followed Chrysler's playbook. Sienna, the new minivan from Toyota. In 1997, Toyota launched their Kentucky-built Sienna minivan, based on the company's award-winning Camry V6 engine. A year later, Honda launched their larger, more powerful Odyssey. By 2001, the minivan market peaked, with nearly 1.4 million sold. The world's most powerful SUV. During the mid-2000s, minivan sales began to slip. Consumers began trending towards the big SUVs like the Cadillac Escalade or crossovers like the Jeep Cherokee for family hauling duties. Today, minivan sales are a mere fraction of what they were in their heyday. Fiat Chrysler's vans still sold more than 50% of the market, while Ford, GM, and Nissan have abandoned the market. The Honda Odyssey and the Toyota Sienna are the only other industry heavyweights left. Although today's minivans have gotten bigger, faster, more refined, and more luxurious, they all still trace their roots back to the little Chrysler van that could from the 1984 model year. Well, there you have it, the history of the minivan. What do you think about the minivans? Let us know. Leave a comment below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell for future notifications of Boca Brother videos. This is Danny B. On behalf of my brother, Michael J., we thank you for watching another Boca Brother video. We'll catch you next weekend.